Today we're going to be at LPC with Lindsay Flanagan. Lindsay is an elite marathoner from the USA and she has a PR of 229 in the marathon. Lindsay has had multiple stress fractures. The majority of the injuries have also been on the left side of her body. So I'm very interested to explore Lindsay's running mechanics and see if we can tie any connections to her injuries and any imbalances we may be seeing. This is the first time I've ever actually used any of this new technology. As you get faster at running, it's it's harder to improve your time solely just by running. So I think having this supplemental information is really huge for my coach and myself. The quality of movement for runners is vital for running performance. A lot of elite athletes focus solely on VO2 max, and but the reality is that running economy plays such a big part in how efficient and how fast a runner can become. In Lindsay's case, I wanted to identify compensatory movement patterns, which could potentially lead to injury and inefficient movements, which may reduce her performance. So today we're going to be exploring the functional movement assessment and the run assessment that we conducted here at LPC with Lindsay. Um, we're going to be looking specifically at the single leg pistol squat in addition to her during the running motion. I was most interested to look at waist gyro Z for Lindsay to explore the lateral shift of her hips during the single leg pistol squat. During this exercise, LVS was extremely useful for me to analyze the movement because it identified that the right side the magnitude of the peaks were significantly higher during the movement than they were on the left. And this would suggest to me that the right side of the body um, has more difficulty when completing the movement, whether that be mobility or strength, there's a significant discrepancy between the two. Observing discrepancies between the left and the right side of the body during the functional movement screen encouraged me to see if biomechanically the same behaviors were occurring during the run. So let's take a look at the run assessment. During the run analysis, we placed the IMUs on the left and the right femur, the left and the right foot, and also on the pelvis. During the assessment, I explored the knee gyro X of the leg swing phase for Lindsay, which explored full hip extension all the way through the knee drive. As an athlete, the desirable movement is to propel your energy directly forward. Whenever we see deviations from this, we're losing efficiency, and this can be displayed in the right and the left side of the negative magnitude of the peak. So when we look at the right knee, we can observe a flatness of the curve. When compared to the left knee, we see that the magnitude and the curve has a nice peak to it. So the right side of the body, it's suggesting some form of impingement through the leg swing phase, whether that be hip abduction, uh, a hip mobility issue, or perhaps a flexibility issue. Um, it's evident that there are discrepancies with the left and the right. This ensemble average acquired from an external source allows me to not only explore the four steps on the previous screen, but it also allows me to look at 300 strides over the whole course of the run analysis. And this exhibits the same behavior throughout the entire trial. So it supports my findings that the flatness of the curve, there is a limitation in hip flexion on the right side versus the left for every one of Lindsay's steps. We brought Lindsay to the Leoma Performance Center to assess her movements both statically and dynamically. And we used the functional movement screening and the run, running test for that. Um, we were able to identify some really interesting imbalances between the left and the right side of her body and we've developed a strength program to target those areas specifically, improve her mobility, strength, and flexibility in order to make her most economical runner she can be.